Mario Kart 8 hit 10 years old in May of 2024, and the deluxe version is already 7 years old, making it the longest we've gone without a new main series Mario Kart release. The Mario Kart franchise is over 30 years old now, and in total it has sold over 180 million units worldwide, making it one of the largest game series ever. But how did we get here? What led Mario Kart to become one of the biggest game franchises of all time? Let's rewind. The year was 1990. Nintendo just released their second home console, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SNES for short. Their first home console, the Family Computer, better known as the Famicom and ultimately named the Nintendo Entertainment System, was a major success in its seven year lifespan. It jumpstarted a gaming revolution and is partially responsible for modern gaming as we know it today. And the SNES only improved on the foundations of the NES, with better graphics and sound, as well as compatibility with new enhancement chips being placed in the cartridges that allowed the games to store more than ever. And if it weren't for the jumps made between the NES and the SNES, we may have never gotten the Mario Kart series at all. You see, along with the SNES, Nintendo released F-Zero, a futuristic racing game set in the year 2560. The game was met with high praise and sold over 2 million copies in total. And Shigeru Miyamoto knew he could capitalize on that success. But how? Well first, he wanted to make a game that two people could play on the same console. And second, he needed a brand that everyone knew and recognized. And what better face to put on the cover than Mario Jumpman Mario, Nintendo's golden child. And after putting Mario in a cart, the developers loved the way it looked. So in 1992, Super Mario Kart was released in both Japan and North America. One of the rare times in the early days of Nintendo, that the game released in the same year in both North America and Japan. But how was the game itself? And more importantly, could it top F-Zero? Super Mario Kart is far removed from the Mario Kart that we know today. For starters, there are only two single player game modes in Super Mario Kart, Time Trials and Grand Prix. When you first load into Grand Prix, there are only two speeds to choose from, 50cc and 100cc. Races are 5 laps instead of 3, and there are only 3 cups, Mushroom, Flower, and Star Cup. Each cup has 5 courses instead of 4, something that will be changed moving forward. Also something different about this game is the live system. In Super Mario Kart, you're granted 3 lives. If you place in the bottom half of the rankings on a track, you lose a life and have to attempt that track again. If you lose all of your lives in a cup, you're disqualified from the cup and you have to restart. After winning every cup at 100cc, you unlock a fourth cup, the special cup. And winning that cup at 100cc grants you 150cc mode. And if you somehow beat all the cups on 150cc, the game presents you with one last challenge. By holding A and Y at the character selection screen, your character will be permanently small as if you were hit by a lightning strike. In time trials, you can select any track you want and go for your fastest time on 100cc with no items or coins. There's also an easter egg in time trials where if you input a specific cheat code, you unlock the special cup. In the Japanese version of the game, a boo sound would play and you wouldn't unlock anything. As for two player game modes, you have three options. Grand Prix, Match Race, and Battle Mode. In Match Race, you go one on one in a Grand Prix style game with no CPU involved. This game mode adds bullet bills that will roam the courses and when you run into them, they make your cart spin out. In battle mode, you're tasked with hitting your opponent with items in a course made specifically for the game mode. Each player has three balloons, and each time you get hit, you lose a balloon. Whoever is left with a balloon at the end wins. This was the first racing game you could compete against your friends or family, and is now a must-have in any racing game. Super Mario Kart has a total of 8 characters from the Mario world. You of course have Mario and Luigi, Peach and Bowser, Yoshi and Toad, and oddly, Koopa Troopa and Donkey Kong Jr. The addition of the last two shows how little Nintendo had to work with in terms of characters back then. Donkey Kong Jr. has not seen a Mario Kart game since, being replaced with Donkey Kong, who is technically DK Jr.'s son, but I digress. The reason Donkey Kong Jr. was added instead of Donkey Kong was because Nintendo released the game on the 10th anniversary of Donkey Kong Jr. The usage of Koopa is most likely just due to there being no other options as many characters in the Mario world were not yet introduced. All of the characters are categorized into pairs. These pairs are the bros, Mario and Luigi, the dragon and the lady, Peach and Yoshi, the showdown, Bowser and DK Jr., and the small guys, Toad and Koopa. 
There are four different stats that are affected by the categories. Those stats are acceleration, top speed, weight, and handling. The bros are an all around choice, as they don't have the highest rating for any of the four stats, but they also don't have the lowest rating either. Yoshi and Peach have the highest acceleration in the game in exchange for poor handling. Bowser Jr. and DK have the highest top speed in the game in exchange for the poor acceleration. And the small guys, Toad and Koopa, got the short end of the stick, with the worst speed and the worst weight stat, in exchange for the best handling and good but not great acceleration. The widely accepted best characters are DK Jr. and Bowser, as all the top speedrunners for the game use one of the two. But for someone just learning the game, Toad or Koopa can be good to learn the controls and get the hang of power sliding. The item pool on Super Mario Kart is what you would expect from a Mario Kart game. All of the classic items are here, like the green shell and red shell, the banana peel, and the mushroom. Some other classics like the lightning, boo, and star power are also in the game. This game also had coins, which had the same effect back then. So when you get a coin in first place in Mario Kart 8, you can thank the original Mario Kart. The last item I haven't mentioned is the feather. The feather allows the player to jump, avoiding items and allowing you to take shortcuts. It may be the best item in the game, but it did not return until Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, where they added it exclusively to battle mode. There are also superpowers for each character, which are only given to the CPU. Mario and Luigi have a star power as their superpower, which is already in the game, but some characters have unique abilities, like Princess Peach, who has a poison mushroom that she can throw on the ground, and anyone who runs into it gets the lightning effect. That is, unless you're already small. Then the mushroom will actually make you normal size again. Yoshi has an egg that acts just like a banana, and Bowser has fireballs that also act similar to a banana, but it moves in a circular motion, covering a little bit more of the track. This specialized item pool would never return to a mainstream Mario Kart game again. There's one issue I have with Super Mario Kart. That's the track list. The game was developed with what's called Mode 7 graphics. The same graphics in F-Zero. This is what gives the game its 3D look. And at the time, these graphics were considered breathtaking. However, going back and playing the game now, some tracks are hard to look at, appearing slightly squished. These graphics also make it very difficult to see what's coming on the track, as the game has very little depth perception. Mode 7 also has its limitations, of course. This can be seen in the track designs themselves. Many of the tracks are very similar, and there are multiples of every track other than Rainbow Road, the game's final track. This is where my issue lies. There are four versions of Mario Circuit, and three versions of Bowser's Castle, Donut Plains, and Ghost Valley. There are also two versions of Chaco Island, Vanilla Lake, and Koopa Beach. And each version is basically the same as the last, with either minor tweaks or just a mirror image. I understand the restrictions, but Nintendo reused too many elements, which makes the game feel slightly repetitive. And even today, whenever an SNES retro track shows up, I get a bit bored at the design. Now let's talk about the controls. Super Mario Kart is very simple to control. Press left on the D-pad to move left, and right to move right. But, turning around a corner slows you down. To combat this, Nintendo designed the Power Slide. The predecessor to the Drift, a Power Slide can allow you to keep all of your speed around a turn, and also allows you to take a much sharper turn than normal. However, unlike a Drift, you are not rewarded a Mini Turbo for holding a Power Slide. Another mechanic is Hopping. Hopping is a way to control your cart while turning and is a sort of in-between a power slide and a regular turn. The controls are very simple, but they definitely take some practice to master. I for one feel like the absence of mini turbos feels odd, and I think if there were mini turbos instead of power sliding, the game would feel even better. But all in all, I do think they laid a foundation for what to expect from the controls in a Mario Kart game in the future. And for a game in 1992, I really can't complain. We all know how important the music in Mario Kart is, and even in the original game, the music shines through. The title screen music in Super Mario Kart is actually the same melody as the one in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The main menu music is a cheerful tune, and it matches the looks and feel of the game so well. and every track even has its own theme, like Mario Circuit's classic theme that followed the track through all of the remakes and games to come.
or Ghost Valley's iconic spooky music that makes you remember all the times that you fell off the track every time you hear it. Or the evil beat that plays while you try to avoid falling into lava on Bowser's castle. And my personal favorite, the theme for Koopa Beach, which I just can't help but dance to just a little bit when racing on it. Mario Kart's music has always been a staple in the franchise, and Super Mario Kart set the standard high. Now obviously, I didn't grow up with this game. In fact, I wasn't even a thought in my parents' minds at this point. My parents were busy graduating high school the year this game came out. However, with the power of the virtual console on the Nintendo Switch, I got the chance to experience it for myself. And I have to say, this game is hard. I spent over 2 hours trying to beat all 4 cups on 100cc, just for the footage for this video. And specifically on Donut Plains 3, it took me 10 attempts to beat it just once. And once I did finally beat it, it took me many more attempts to beat the entire special cup, because Ghost Valley 3 was giving me a hard time as well. It took me a long time to learn that Rocket Boost even existed, and even more time to figure out how it actually worked. But eventually, I finally beat every cup in 100cc. And that was good enough for me. As I write this script right now, I'm thinking of all the time and effort I put into just getting the gameplay footage for this video. And if you made it this far in the video, you must have liked it a lot. So, go ahead and subscribe for me. I put hours into making sure I experienced every track, and got to put every track in this video just for you. So make sure you give me some love. Thanks. Nobody could have predicted what would be to come for the Mario Kart franchise. Super Mario Kart ignited an insatiable fire in fans, and laid the groundwork for one of the greatest gaming series of all time. With its two-player gameplay, which allowed you to play against anyone in your own house, to the Mode 7 graphics, which defined an era of racing games, to its iconic items and character selection, most of which remain in the game to this day. And in spite of the lackluster course selection, Nintendo still tips its hat to the original, with retro courses in its honor, revamped and in a better shape than ever. Now, Mario Kart is a household name, and anyone from the ages of 5 to 35 probably knows the name. The legacy of the old SNES game will live on forever, whether through those who were there to witness the original, or those who grew up playing any of the games after. And even someone like me, who grew up playing Mario Kart on the DS and the Wii, has the utmost respect for this game, and I appreciate everything Nintendo has done to bring the franchise to where it is today. Mario Kart has touched so many lives, and it all started with Super Mario Kart.